great time of year, everything's coming on. It's Waratah season now. The season comes pretty quick and it actually finishes pretty quick. So you want to get in and get your Waratahs as soon as you can. They say with the Waratah, Tilopia speciosissima. Tilopia means seen from afar. So when you go walking in the bush, you can see the Waratahs when they're flowering from a long way off. They stand out. This Waratah Tilopia speciosissima mainly grows in the Sydney region. It grows a little bit north of Sydney and a little bit south of Sydney. And then in Victoria, you have a different species of Waratah growing. And then in Tasmania, another different species altogether. But the New South Wales Waratahs are the best. It goes without saying. Some of them have been developed by the growers. They've been crossed one variety with another variety to come up with a new variety. The white with the red to give you the pink. The white was found in the, in the wild, but very, very few plants of white have ever been found in the wild. But the red, red are everywhere. There's some beautiful varieties here. We've got the majestic big one here called Fire and Brimstone, and a beautiful pink one here. These are pink because a couple of the growers have bred them. They cross the white one with the red one and they ended up with a pink one. To get them so perfectly, they protect them with a stocking. Put a stocking over it, protect them from the sun, and then they take the stocking off and they have this beautiful pink color. They also have this really deep red one is like a spider and they call that one scarlet ribbons which is pretty magnificent. There's a white one here. This one was found initially down near the southern highlands. Over the years growers have propagated from that one plant and got this one. It's called Wirrumbira white and from Wirrumbira white they've bred a number of white waratahs but Wirrumbira white even though it's the hardest one to grow it's still the best one. When they flower they're magnificent. It's illegal to pick waratahs from the wild. They all need to be grown on farms and harvested on those farms. They've got very, very woody stems. So you need to cut them with a good pair of secateurs and put them in deep water. Don't put them in a little bit of water, put them in deep water. If, the, if you find the heads go soft, just give them another cut and put them in deep water again. They should last for up to two weeks. So when the Waratah season comes around, everybody gets excited. Particularly in Sydney, it's our flower. They're just magnificent. The paper daisies are something special. You can have them in a vase for a week and then you can hang them upside down and dry them and you'll have them for a year. These are all from Western Australia, but we grow them in our greenhouse at Mangrove Mountain. It's quite tiny and delicate, but really pretty. The wax is really coming through, all the different varieties. Kangaroo paw is starting, and the flannel flowers are just starting. These are growing up on the north coast in a greenhouse, and the local ones will be starting soon. They just grow on the east coast of Australia and a little bit inland. They're a protected plant, so you, you can only sell them if they're cultivated. This is another beautiful filler. It's called Ariostomum flower girl. You can see all the fillers are coming through now. It's really lovely. The ones that we've been looking at now are all Australian natives. These are silver bells, these are really beautiful. That's it, one of the everlasting daisies. You can dry them and they keep forever as a dry flower or you can use them fresh. They're a lovely plant, very delicate but really lovely. There's another little one here that's really pretty. It's called Albany Swamp Daisy. Quite difficult to grow but it's really pretty. Think of Australian natives as being hard and, and tough but a lot of them are very delicate. You gotta look hard sometimes to find some really pretty things. Little tiny orchids and you know there's lovely things around that if you walk through quickly you just won't even see them. There's a, just a few growers who are really passionate about growing Australian native flowers and and they invest a lot of time, like us, into growing new and different things. With all, all of your flowers, it's best just to recut the stems, strip some of the lower leaves off them. Natives tend to like a little bit more water than a lot of your traditional flowers. Paper daisies are a little bit different, but some of the other natives need more water in the vase. You know, spring is the best time, the greatest time for Australian wildflowers and traditional flowers. Our wildflowers are really doing their thing in spring. Yeah, ask your florist for a beautiful bouquet of spring native flowers. Send a bunch to your mum or a friend, just so they can put it on their table and enjoy it and uh, feel a bit better while they're stuck at home.